Well, I love the movies. Welcome to the biggest movie event of the year. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. And the Oscar goes and the Oscar to. Oscar goes to. Nicholson. Nick Ledger. Curious case of Benjamin Button. The Dark Knight. Sean Penn. Slumdog Millionaire. Thank you so much. All right. I have to say, Lamont, that was the worst throw I've ever seen. Man. He couldn't even get it off the stage. I mean, hey, man, but we're glad you guys are having a good time. You know, today um, is uh, we're kicking off another installment of uh, Victory at the Movies sermon series. And, you know, over the last two weeks, uh, God's been doing some powerful things, and I believe he's going to really help us this morning, too. And today's movie clip is is actually probably one of the most popular superheroes that there are. And I, some of you might think, oh, it's, you know, it's Batman or Spider-Man, but this superhero is just really cool. It's Wolverine. I mean, how cool is that guy, man? You know, Wolverine's just this cool dude, the guy who plays him, uh, Hugh Jackman. I mean, he just is awesome in the part. It's like he was made for that. And Wolverine is just this indestructible guy. You know, he na- never ages. Ladies, how, how, is, how cool is that, man? He never ages. You know, uh, he's pretty much, uh, you know, bulletproof except for that Magneto guy. I mean, you know, nothing hurts him. But the movie clip I'm going to show is a totally different Wolverine than we're normally used to seeing. And so this movie clip, actually, it's the trailer for the movie Logan. So we're going to play that now. Now, like we've always said, you know, we're not promoting any movie. We're just using the clips as an illustration. And the movie Logan is probably not the best movie to see. It's pretty intense. And the worst part about Logan, and this is a spoiler alert, is that Wolverine dies in it. I mean, that's terrible. I mean, how can that happen? This is Wolverine. This isn't Batman. This isn't Cyclops. You know, this is the indestructible Wolverine, and he dies. Now, the thing you need to understand about our sermon series that we do is that we plan these really far ahead of time. Uh, Matter of fact, uh, last August, we planned all of 2017. And even months and months before, we actually uh, get together with the creative team and we plan out each individual sermon. And so I've been scheduled to do this for months and months and months. I mean, for a long, long time. But over the last few months, most of you know I've had some ongoing health issues <laughs> and, and I've had uh, some problems where I had an infection in my intestines. Now, don't worry, it's not contagious, okay? So you guys aren't going to get sick. Hey, I got some ringing on this too if you get a chance. And so what happened is I had this uh, infection, and what the doctors had to do is they had to go in and cut out over a foot of my intestines and then splice it back together. And this has been a very unusual time for me because, um, you know, I, I've never been sick. And never in my life, you know, besides the normal colds and flus. And, but I've never been in a situation where I've been really sick. And, and I have been for months. And as I was, you know, thinking and preparing for this sermon, um, I was almost looking at myself like Wolverine. You know, before I was sick, I felt that I was kind of bulletproof. That, you know, I could pretty much do anything. But then I got sick, and, and it was a really unusual experience for me because um, I was always the one that was praying for someone who was sick, not someone praying for me. I wasn't the one that everyone was asking, hey, how are you doing? I was the one was saying, hey, how are you doing? How are you? I wasn't one that people were asking, do you need anything? I was the one that said, hey, what do you need? You need something. I was the one that was going to the hospital, visiting people that were lying on a hospital bed needing a miracle. 
And what has happened, it's like everything got flipped on me. And one of the hardest things in this whole process is me, you know, realizing that I'm not bulletproof. I'm not like, you know, the old Wolverine. I'm more like the Wolverine you just saw in the video. You know, the other night at the newcomer's dinner, um, we were just, people were just cleaning up. And, uh, you know, people were taking tables down and all. And I'm watching this, and I can't do anything. You know, the doctor ordered me, you know, you can't lift anything more than like a jug of milk. And I'm watching, you know, all this stuff going on, things that I used to do and help out, and now I, c I couldn't do any of it. And through this whole ordeal, I have felt that God is saying something to our church because he uses every circumstance. He uses every situation. He uses things that are good and things that are bad and even things that are terrible to show us things. And through this ordeal is that, is our church, if we're going to be all that we're supposed to be and all that God wants us to be, everyone has to rise up and do their part in making it happen. Everyone. It just can't be on my shoulders. It just can't be on the shoulders of the staff or a few leaders or the people in the red t-shirts. It's got to be everyone because we are all members of the body of Christ, every single one of us. And I want to read some verses this morning, actually one verse and then later on some more. <clears throat> but the first one is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, and you can read it from your Bible or it'll be on the screen. And it says this. For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. I want you to pray with me and ask God to help us. <clears throat> God, we are totally dependent on you this morning, and we ask you that you would move supernaturally and speak to us and help us and show us your will and show us your glory, Father. And God, that you just would be in this place with us, Holy Spirit, and speak to us, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me, I even have a little bit of a, a thr uh, throat issue this morning. Thank God for Lehigh water. Praise the Lord for that. Now, if you were to read further in that chapter, you would quickly realize that a church is a part of the body of Christ. Every church is that is preaching the gospel. And each body has different members, and they're all providing functions so that the body can operate. You know, we have eyes. So that we can see and the eyes have a function in our body. You know, we have the sense of hearing. You know, we can hear things and, and that is a tremendous function to have. How about the, the function of smell? Amen. You know, you smell some bacon, man. Oh, man, what a glorious smell that is. I mean, that's a, 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 from heaven. Amen. And you can smell things. And that is a part of your body. You have hands to be able to use and grab and to drive a car and to do other things. And we all have a function in the body. Every part is important. See, I remember when this church first started, when we planted this church. At that point... I was doing everything. I really was. I mean, we were, we were in the old movie theater, and I remember I would be the first one there, man. I'd be there early. I'd unlock the door and then turn all the lights on, and then I would go in and clean the movie theater. And, you know, some of you have heard this. Some of you new folks haven't. But, I mean, when we would go in there, there it was an operating movie theater, and the theater realized that, you know, that we would clean up the theater if... Uh, 
uh, you know, we were going to have service. So we went in there. We had to clean it up. And I'd be in there with a leaf blower just blowing everything out, man. You know, popcorn and milk duds and all kinds of stuff. And I was being there cleaning. And I'd set up everything. And then I would greet everybody as they would come in. And then I would preach. And then I would do announcements. And then I would pray for everybody. And then when everything was done, I would lock up everything. But in order for our church to progress, things couldn't stay that way. If we're going to excel, if we're going to do what God wants us to do, what happened is there had to be some other people that would come and open up the church. And we have people now that come early and they open up and they turn the lights on and get things ready. We have others that come and clean. Thank God for those people. They come and clean and, and on a Sunday morning or on a Wednesday and get the place ready. We have other people that are greeting and inviting people people in as they come. We have a prayer team that prays for people. And it's got to the point where now all I have to do is preach. And even that, Pastor Daniel does half of the preaching now. And you might say, well, that's great. Now you don't have to do anything. It's like you're retired. You know, you don't have to do anything. But as the church has gotten bigger and bigger, I've had other things that have cropped up that I've become responsible for. And it's crazy. It's like once I delegate one thing, I, I have it off of my plate and have someone else rise up and do that. Then something else comes on my plate that I have to do. And it's just a part of the process but now our church is at a critical junction. It is at a crossroads. It is at a place that is very critical in what's going to happen in the future for our church because there has to be a change. There has to be a shift where the care and ministry is not just flowing from the pastor or pastors, but it's flowing from one member to another member. It's not just coming from me. It's not just coming from my wife or Pastor Daniel, but it's got to come from each individual members where we are ministering one to another. And I've shared this statistic before, but 95% of the churches in America are 200 people or less. And there's a reason why that is. The reason is, is about 200 people is about the maximum that a pastor can minister to. And our church is way beyond that. On a typical Sunday, we have about 300 people that come, if you count everybody and the kids. And if everybody who identifies victory as their church, you know, we would have over, you know, probably about 450 people. And it's gotten to the point that I don't even know everybody's name anymore. And I, and I hate that. I mean, I used to know everybody's name. And it was so great to say, hey, how you doing, Steve? Or how you doing, uh, you know, Susie or whatever. But now it's like I don't even know everybody's name. I mean, because it's gotten to that point. To, see, but God is not finished with us yet. Amen. Amen. He has not finished with us. <clears throat> We are just scratching the surface. We are just at the beginning stages of what God wants to do with this church and through this church. You know, on Wednesday night, you know, we had Pastor Shanu from India. And here's a guy that's, that's one of the main leaders of this massive organization. They have over 100,000 people in their churches. That's a big organization. That makes Joel Olstein's church look like a little Bible study. I mean, it's a massive organization in India. And when he was here preaching for us, he gave us a scripture from the Bible that actually mentions Lehi in the Bible. Now, it's not spelled just like ours. It's spelled L-E-H-I. But it talks about this place. I mentioned this on Wednesday after he preached. But it talks about Lehi being a watering place that, that would bring refreshment. And that's what our church is. Amen. We are refreshing the city of Lehi. We are refreshing southwest Florida and other states and other nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if we're going to continue, you know, it can't stay the way it is. 
Something has to happen unless there's a shifting. This will not take place the way God wants it to take place. But there's got to be a shifting where the care of ministry is from one member to another. You know, I so enjoyed the worship and people were worshiping and, and, and people were coming up and praying for other people. Amen. No one told them to do that. No one said, hey, you go and pray for that person. It was just a part of what we're trying to do. Amen. Where ministry is flowing from one person to another. It's not just the leaders or the pastors. In 1 Corinthians 14, 26, it says, What is the outcome then, brethren? When you assemble, each one has a psalm, has a teaching, has a revelation, has a tongue, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. You know, what's talking about when we assemble, when we come together as a church, you know, somebody brings a psalm, somebody brings a teaching, somebody brings a revelation. Does that mean it's just some chaotic thing that everybody's just doing what they want? No, but what it means is that everyone is coming to minister. Everyone is coming not just to receive. Amen. We're not just coming to see what we can get. We're coming to see what we can give, how we can help someone else, how we can minister to someone else. You know, I'm going to go to church and I want to pray for somebody. Who can I pray for? Who can I encourage? Who can I give a verse to? Who can I give direction to? That's what our attitude has to be. But I'm telling you something. It's got to come from you. It just can't come from me anymore. Amen. Because I'm not going to be around forever. I'm not the old Wolverine, man. I'm not bulletproof. Hey, man, I found that out really hard when I went through what I went through. Now, you might say, well, how does this look? I mean, what does this look like? Well, first off, my main job as a pastor now is to equip people to do ministry. At one time, my job was to pray for everybody. My one job was to go on every outreach and to be there for everybody that was in the hospital or needed counseling or whatever. But now my job is to equip you to do the ministry. Look at these verses in Ephesians. Are you guys still with me? Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, it says, And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. Think about it. It's equipping the saints for the work of the service. I'm equipping you to do the work of the ministry. I'm equipping you. Amen. So that the body of Christ, so the church can be built up. My job is to help to equip you to do that. To do the work of service. Now in any church, you're going to have people in different stages of where they're at in their walk with God. Okay? Now you, in our church, we, we have some people that are brand new Christians, man. I mean brand new. They've been saved a very short time. Then we have some people that have been Christians many, many years, some longer than I have. <laughs> and you have folks that maybe just moved to the area and they just started coming to victory. And other stages too. So we have all these different people and all these different stages. But we have to understand that the very first stage that we have is that and it's a level that we all need to attain to, is that we have to do something. You're in a church, do something. You know, I think about myself when I first went in to a church. You know, I mean, it's not a glorious thing, but what, my, what I first started doing was cleaning up after all the donuts. You know, no one told me to do this. 
I just did it. You know, there was people in the church that were there for years, uh, you know, and they would just come and get their donuts. And, you know, you know, the powdered donuts especially, man, they get all over, man. I mean, they're messy. I don't care if you're an adult. You get it all over the place. And they would just make a mess and then just leave it. And I just took it upon myself to clean up. I did something. Was it really that important? No, it was something very small. But I did something. There are a lot of people that never cross that barrier. They come to church for weeks, months, and sometimes years and never do anything. Well, you know what? Someone else will do it. You know what? Pastor Larry, he'll do it. Well, you know what? Alicia, she's Supergirl, man. She's got a cape and everything. You know, she'll take care of it. Well, you know what? Alicia's not even here. She won't be here because she's on a mission trip in Fiji, amen, ministering over there. She's not here to do it. And I can't do hardly anything. I can't lift anything. Well, someone else will do it. Why not you do it? Amen. Amen. Whether you've been a Christian for 10 years or one week, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're brand new to the church or or you just started coming. Do something. Help someone. You know, maybe someone's lifting something heavy. Help them lift it. Don't say, hey, that looks pretty heavy, and then walk right by. (laughs) I remember this happened in Fiji, man. You know, we used to live, the church was downstairs, and our house was above the church, and we had these really steep stairs coming down from our house. And one time, Linda was at the top of the stairs coming down, and she slipped. It was wet, and she went all the way down on her butt, right down to the bottom. And all the guys, there's all these guys watching her like, ha, she just fell down. And they just let her sit there. It's like, what is, what is up with that? Amen. <laughs> we can all do something. You know, pick up that piece of trash that's right in front of you that's calling your name. Pick me up. I'm here. Pick me up. <clears throat> Instead of walking over it. Oh, the cleaning crew will get that. What is up with that? Hey, man. I'm getting on a roll, man. I got stitches. I think they're going to pop, man. You know, maybe you see that lady that's like, like juggling three little kids, toddlers, and, and she's trying to open a door, and you're just watching her open the stinking door for her. Amen. Help her out. Do something. We can all do something. Amen. Here's the second level or stage is being faithful. Amen. Proverbs 20, verse 6, it says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man, who can find? One of the hardest things to deal with as a leader is when people aren't faithful. You know, I was talking to Pastor Shanu from India, and I was telling him that, you know, we have some people that they'll come to church one week, and then you won't see them for three or four weeks. And he looked at me like I'm from a different planet, like, what are you talking about? I go, well, they'll come, and then we won't see them for like three or four weeks. And he's like, wow. He goes, that doesn't happen in India. And he was looking at me like, "What's you know, that's crazy. And see, when that happens, it's hard to build momentum when that is happening. How do we run a children's church, amen, if we have no idea if the teacher is even going to show up to teach the kids? Wow, is the teacher going to be here in the nursery? How do we do that? But being faithful, it changes everything. I remember when God finally got a hold of my life, and I said, I'm going to be faithful. I'm not missing a church service. I'm going to do my ministry. I'm going to be there. Amen. Rain or shine. I'm not going to miss what God has for me. And it could be even something simple. Here's an example. You know, every Sunday morning after service, 
we have refreshments in the lounge. Isn't it great? You go down there and mysteriously cookies appear. Where did they come? You know, the Keebler L's were here. No, there were some ladies, even some guys doing some baking. And but you know what's happened? It's we have found it more and more difficult for folks just to help out to make some snacks. Where if we had everyone, we should have people lining up to say, hey, I'd like to make snacks one week. I'd like to make some cookies or, or make some you know, brownies or whatever we're eating because, hey, amen, we like eating them, don't we? Hey, amen. We have no problem eating them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Get me some brownies, man. But you know what? If we had people that were faithful, we could just, each person could do it once every two or three months. And we would be fine. But it's hard to do it when we have no idea if someone's even going to be here or not. I'm preaching, man. I'm preaching. Amen. <clears throat> this leads into the next level. Ministering to others. In Philippians 2.4, it says, Do not merely look out for your own personal interest." but also for the interest of others. This is where everything changes. Where you are looking, what can I do to minister to somebody? How can I bless someone? How can I pray for them? How can I encourage them? Hey Amen. How maybe I could give them a ride to church. You realize some people don't have transportation. And they, they're, they're not here because they don't have a ride. We have to be people that are looking to minister to others. You know, when I went through all the, some of this stuff when I was in the hospital, I had to get this thing called a pick line. How many people have heard of a pick line? Okay, some of you. Well, for those who don't, what they do is they stick this, this, inner, this inner IV thing in your arm, and then they hook it up almost to your heart. It almost goes right to your heart. So you get the IVs like, you know, supercharged right to your heart. And it's a, it's a crazy process that they have to do. You have to lay there, and they've got two nurses, and they've got, like, masks on, and they've got all this stuff, and they're, they're doing this thing into your arm. And I had these two nurses that were doing this to me. And, it, it, I mean, it's a, it's a crazy process, man. If you've ever had it done, it's like, wow, this is crazy, man. And, and they're doing this. But what happens, I start talking to this one nurse, and she's not saved, and I just start witnessing to her. She's doing this thing. I'm like, you know, you know Jesus, you know, you know he died for you. And, and, and I, you had to have your arms. You had to lay still, but I could still talk. So I'm still talking, man. Amen. Because even though I need this, even though this is something that's it's a very critical thing, this lady is lost. She doesn't know Jesus. Amen. And I need to be worried about her, not just what's going on in my life. Amen. It's not all about us. It's always not about us. It's about others. But, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Amen. You don't know what it's like laying here in a hospital bed, people sticking you with needles and poking you into your heart. Amen. I'm still going to do it. Amen. See, when I come to church, whether I'm preaching or not, I'm like, who can I bless? Who can I talk to? Who can I pray for? You know, if, someone, if I see somebody new, I'm like, hey, how you doing, man? You know, do you know where things are at? Do you know where the nursery's at? Yeah, how about the bat? You know, why? Because we need to care about people, and anybody can do this. Whether you're a teenager, everyone can reach this level. Whether you're not highly educated, if you have a checkered background, it doesn't matter. We can all do this. Now, the next level is not a level that everyone can be on, but I believe there's a lot more people sitting in here that should be on this level, and that's leading. Now, some will automatically say, I'm not a leader. I could never lead anything. You are surprised what God can do. You look at Gideon, and Gideon said, you know, I'm a nobody, and God made him a leader of a nation. 
David was taking care of sheep. He's this young boy, amen, and God said, I want you to lead my people. And then as a young man in his 20s, he was a leader. Moses, oh, I can't talk. I stutter. And God raised him up. I think about me, you know, here it is, I'm a screwed up former drug addict. And I'm leading an organization with over 400 people. That's insane. That's it's crazy. That's like, that doesn't make sense. How is that possible? It's possibly because with God, all things are possible. Everything is possible with God. And God is looking to raise up people to be leaders. And you just have to be willing. You have to say, God, I am willing. God, raise me up. God, use me to lead others. God, use my life. Maybe it's in a ministry. Maybe it's in some other capacity. But you have to be open to that. You can't say no to God. You know, it's so easy to say no to God, isn't it? We just say, God, I don't want to do that. And God said, okay. He's not going to force you. He's not going to twist your arm. But we got to say, God, I'm willing. God, raise me up to be the person you've called me to be. And I believe there are so many untapped potential leaders in this church. It blows my mind. You're just sitting here, and you have all the capacity to be, to be a powerful leader. Amen. All you have to be is willing. Amen. Now, the fifth level is found in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, and it says this, The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, and trust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. It's talking about... Teach others to teach others. And this is a very difficult thing, but this is the whole crux of discipleship. Where you are teaching others to teach others. You're teaching other people to minister to other people. To pour their life into other people. During this time that when I was in the hospital and even after when I was recovering... I could not believe how many text messages, you know, Facebook posts, phone calls, and even face-to-faces where people said to me, Pastor, if there is anything you need, let me know. If there's anything that I can help you with, don't hesitate to call me. And it's unbelievable the love and the concern that was shown towards me. And I am so grateful for that, man. I really am. But I have to be honest. I have to be very careful and I have to be very gracious when I hear that. Because I want to say, you want to help me? Help me build the kingdom, man. Do I have some needs that you could help me with? Yes, Help me touch the world for Jesus. You know, I'm fine. I'm in some pain. But you know what? There's people all around us, amen, that are lost and going to hell without Christ. All around us. There are others. These are our friends and our brothers and sisters in Christ that are just hanging on by a thread. I mean, they're at the end of the rope. And that's one of the hardest things during this whole time is that I don't want anyone to fall through the cracks because I'm just not able to help them right now. I just can't. I mean, even to preach this morning, man, I'm putting everything on the line. You know, I was talking to Pastor Russ Castile, and, and he was talking to me about my operation, and he, he knows someone else that had the same operation, and, and he couldn't believe I'm preaching You know, I was talking to him last night, and he couldn't believe I was preaching today. He said, man, I know people that have had that. They're they're down for months. And I said, man, I don't want anyone to fall through the cracks, man. Amen. And you want to help me? Help people that don't know God, man. 
Help that person that's sitting next to you that's struggling. That person that that's, that's needs your help, man. I'll be okay, but they need you. Hey, man, help me to build the kingdom to what God's doing here at Victory. And the question is, are you willing? You know, will you go to that next level? Will you make that jump and and do what God's called you to do? Because we all are part of the body, and we all have a part in what God wants to do. Amen.